Khmer Pakilometra, or Cambodian is the language of the Khmer people and the official language of Cambodia. With approximately 16 million speakers, it is the second most widely spoken Austroasiatic language. Khmer has been influenced considerably by Sanskrit and Pali, especially in the royal and religious registers, through Hinduism and Buddhism. The more colloquial registers have influenced, and have been influenced by Thai, Lao, Vietnamese, and Cham, all of which, due to geographical proximity and long-term cultural contact, form a sprach bund in peninsula Southeast Asia. It is also the earliest recorded and earliest written language of the Mon Khmer family, predating Mon and by a significant margin Vietnamese. Due to Old Khmer being the language of the historical empires of Chen La, Angkor and presumably, their earlier predecessor state, Funan. The vast majority of Khmer speakers speak Central Khmer, the dialect of the Central Plain where the Khmer are most heavily concentrated. Within Cambodia, regional accents exist in remote areas but these are regarded varieties of Central Khmer. Two exceptions are the speech of the capital, Phnom Penh, and that of the remote Cardamom Mountains both of which differ sufficiently enough from central Khmer to be considered separate dialects of Khmer. Outside of Cambodia, two distinct dialects are spoken by ethnic Khmers native to areas that were historically part of the Khmer Empire. The northern Khmer dialect is spoken by the Khmer of the southern regions of northeast Thailand and Khmer Krom, or southern Khmer, is the first language of the Khmer of Vietnam. Khmer is primarily an analytic, isolating language. There are no inflections, conjugations or case endings. Instead, particles and auxiliary words are used to indicate grammatical relationships. General word order is subject, verb, object, and modifiers follow the word they modify. Classifiers appear after numbers when used to count nouns, though not always, so consistently as in languages like Chinese. Khmer differs from neighboring languages such as Thai, Burmese, Lao and Vietnamese in that it is not a tonal language. Words are stressed on the final syllable, hence many words conform to the typical Mon-Khmer pattern of a stressed syllable preceded by a minor syllable. The Khmer script is an Ibujida descended from the Brahma script via the southern Indian Pallava script. Its features include subscripted versions of consonants used to write clusters and a division of consonants into two series with different inherent vowels. Classification Khmer is a member of the Austroasiatic language family. The autochthonous family in an area that stretches from the Malay Peninsula through Southeast Asia to East India. Austroasiatic, which also includes Mon, Vietnamese and Munda, has been studied since 1856 and was first proposed as a language family in 1907. Despite the amount of research, there is still doubt about the internal relationship of the languages of Austroasiatic. Difloth places Khmer in an eastern branch of the Mon Khmer languages. In these classification schemes Khmer's closest genetic relatives are the Balneric and Piaric languages. More recent classifications doubt the validity of the Mon Khmer subgrouping and place the Khmer language as its own branch of Austroasiatic equidistant from the other 12 branches of the family. Geographic distribution and dialects. Khmer is spoken by some 13 million people in Cambodia, where it is the official language. It is also a second language for most of the minority groups and indigenous hill tribes there. Additionally there are a million speakers of Khmer native to southern Vietnam and 1.4 million in northeast Thailand. Khmer dialects, although mutually intelligible, are sometimes quite marked. Notable variations are found in speakers from Phnom Penh, the rural Batambang area. The areas of northeast Thailand adjacent to Cambodia such as Surin Province, the Cardamom Mountains, and southern Vietnam. The dialects form a continuum running roughly north to south. Standard Cambodian Khmer is mutually intelligible with the others but a Khmer Krom speaker from Vietnam, for instance, may have great difficulty communicating with a Khmer native to Sazakit province in Thailand. 
The following is a classification scheme showing the development of the modern Khmer dialects. Middle Khmer Cardamom Khmer Central Khmer Saran Khmer Standard Khmer and Related Dialects Standard Khmer or Central Khmer The language is taught in Cambodian schools and used by the media is based on the dialect spoken throughout the Central Plain a region encompassed by the Northwest and Central Provinces Northern Khmer refers to the dialect spoken by many in several border provinces of present-day Northeast Thailand. After the fall of the Khmer Empire in the early 15th century, the Dongrek Mountains served as a natural border leaving the Khmer north of the mountains under the sphere of influence of the Kingdom of Lanzang. The conquest of Cambodia by Nareshu and the Great Phraya furthered their political and economic isolation from Cambodia proper, leading to a dialect that developed relatively independently from the midpoint of the Middle Khmer period. This has resulted in a distinct accent influenced by the surrounding tonal languages Lao and Thai, lexical differences, and phonemic differences in both vowels and distribution of consonants. Syllable final, R, which has become silent in other dialects of Khmer, is still pronounced in Northern Khmer. Some linguists classify Northern Khmer as a separate but closely related language rather than a dialect. Western Khmer, also called Cardamom Khmer or Chantaburi Khmer, is spoken by a very small, isolated population in the Cardamom mountain range extending from western Cambodia into eastern central Thailand. Although little studied, this variety is unique in that it maintains a definite system of vocal register that has all but disappeared in other dialects of modern Khmer. Phnom Penh Khmer is spoken in the capital and surrounding areas. For instance, Phnom Penh will sometimes be shortened to Emperor. Another characteristic of Phnom Penh speech is observed in words with an R either as an initial consonant or as the second member of a consonant cluster. The R, trilled or flapped in other dialects, is either pronounced as a uvular trill or not pronounced at all. This alters the quality of any preceding consonant, causing a harder, more emphasized pronunciation. Another unique result is that the syllable is spoken with a low rising or dipping tone much like the hoi tone in Vietnamese. For example, some people pronounce trej as taj. The R is dropped and the vowel begins by dipping much lower in tone than standard speech and then rises, effectively doubling its length. Another example is the word rien, which is pronounced ien with the uvular R and the same intonation described above. Khmer Krom or Southern Khmer is spoken by the indigenous Khmer population of the Mekong Delta, formerly controlled by the Khmer Empire but part of Vietnam since 1698. Khmers are persecuted by the Vietnamese government for using their native language in, since the 1950s, have been forced to take Vietnamese names. Consequently, very little research has been published regarding this dialect. It has been generally influenced by Vietnamese for three centuries and accordingly displays a pronounced accent. Tendency toward monosyllabic words and lexical differences from standard Khmer. Khmer Khe is spoken in the Shaisan, Srepok and Sekong river valleys of Sezan and Simpang districts in Stung Treng province. Following the decline of Angkor, the Khmer abandoned their northern territories which were then settled by the Lao. In the 17th century, Chechethe Shi led a Khmer force into Stung Treng to retake the area. The Khmer Khe living in this area of Stung Treng in modern times are presumed to be the descendants of this group. Their dialect is thought to resemble that of pre-modern Siem Reap. Historical Periods Linguistic study of the Khmer language divides its history into four periods one of which, the Old Khmer period, is subdivided into pre-Angkorian and Angkorian. Pre-Angkorian Khmer, the Old Khmer language from 600 CE through 800, is only known from words and phrases in Sanskrit texts of the era. Old Khmer is the language as it was spoken in the Khmer Empire from the 9th century until the weakening of the empire sometime in the 13th century. 
Old Khmer is attested by many primary sources and has been studied in depth by a few scholars, most notably Saver Aspo, Philip Jenner and Heinz Jürgen Pino. Following the end of the Khmer Empire the language lost the standardizing influence of being the language of government and accordingly underwent a turbulent period of change in morphology phonology and lexicon. The language of this transition period, from about the 14th to 18th centuries, is referred to as Middle Khmer and saw borrowing from Thai, Laoan, to a lesser extent, Vietnamese. The changes during this period are so profound that the rules of modern Khmer cannot be applied to correctly understand Old Khmer. The language became recognizable as modern Khmer, spoken from the 19th century till today. The following table shows the conventionally accepted historical stages of Khmer. Just as modern Khmer was emerging from the transitional period represented by Middle Khmer, Cambodia fell under the influence of French colonialism. In 1887 Cambodia was fully integrated into French Indochina, which brought in a French-speaking aristocracy. This led to French becoming the language of higher education and the intellectual class. Many native scholars in the early 20th century, led by a monk named Chuan Nath, Nath cultivated modern Khmer language identity and culture, overseeing the translation of the entire Pali Buddhist canon into Khmer and creating the modern Khmer language dictionary that is still in use today thereby ensuring that Khmer would survive, and indeed flourish, during the French colonial period. Phonology The phonological system described here is the inventory of sounds of the standard spoken language, represented using appropriate symbols from the international phonetic alphabet. Consonants The voiceless plosives P, T, C, K may occur with or without aspiration. This difference is contrasted before a vowel. However, the aspirated sounds in that position may be analyzed as sequences of two phonemes. P, H, T, H, C, H, K, H. This analysis is supported by the fact that infixes can be inserted between the stop and the aspiration, for example, t om becomes tum hum with her, nominalizing infix. When one of these plosives occurs initially before another consonant, aspiration is no longer contrastive and can be regarded as mere phonetic detail. Slight aspiration is expected when the following consonant is not one of B, D, R, per second, H. The voice plosives are pronounced as implosives B, D by most speakers, but this feature is weak in educated speech, where they become B, D, in syllable final position, H, and V, approach, C, and W, respectively. The stops P, T, C, K are unaspirated and have no audible release when occurring as syllable finals. In addition, the consonants F and Z occur occasionally in recent loanwords in the speech of Cambodians familiar with French and other languages. Other speakers may approximate them with natively occurring phonemes, such as K for H or PH for F and per second for or Z. Vowels Various authors have proposed slightly different analyses of the Khmer vowel system. This may be in part because of the wide degree of variation in pronunciation between individual speakers, even within a dialectal region. The description below follows half man. The number of vowel nuclei and the values vary between dialects. Differences exist even between the standard Khmer system and that of the Batambang dialect on which the standard is based. The vowel sometimes has a shorter pronunciation in weak initial syllables, but this is not considered distinctive. Most of the diphthongs are described as falling, except for U and O, which are sometimes rising. The starting points of the short diphthongs are slightly more open than the corresponding monophthongs. There are also some sequences with off guides which are analyzed as vowel plus semi vowel. These include IV, EV, AJ, AV, UJ, EJ, AJ, IEJ, IEV, IEJ, AOJ, UEJ. Syllable structure A Khmer syllable begins with a single consonant, or else with a cluster of two, or rarely three, consonants. 
The only possible clusters are three consonants at the start of a syllable a street skr and south lkh. There are 85 possible two-consonant clusters. All the clusters are shown in the following table, phonetically, i.e., with superscript marking either contrastive or non-contrastive aspiration. Slight vowel apenthesis occurs in the clusters consisting of a plosive followed by b, d, in those beginning, per meter, l, and in the cluster, knots. After the initial consonant or consonant cluster comes the syllabic nucleus, which is one of the vowels listed above. This vowel may end the syllable or may be followed by a coda, which is a single consonant. If the syllable is stressed and the vowel is short, there must be a final consonant. All consonants except B, D, R per second can appear as the coda. For pronunciation differences in final position, see above under consonants. A minor syllable has a structure of CV, CRV, CVN or CRVN. For the pronunciation of such syllables, see the following section. Stress stressing Khmer falls on the final syllable of a word. Because of this predictable pattern, stress is non-phonemic in Khmer. Most Khmer words consist of either one or two syllables. In most native disyllabic words, the first syllable is a minor syllable. Such words have been described as sesquisyllabic. The vowels in such syllables are usually short. In conversation, they may be reduced to e, although in careful or formal speech, including on television and radio, they are clearly articulated. An example of such a word is pronounced mnuh, or more casually, mnuh. There are also some disyllables in which the first syllable does not behave as a minor syllable, but takes secondary stress. Most such words are compounds, but some are single morphemes. An example is pronounced piesa. Words with three or more syllables, if they are not compounds, are mostly loan words, usually derived from Pali, Sanskrit, or more recently, French. They are nonetheless adapted to Khmer stress patterns. Primary stress falls on the final syllable, with secondary stress on every second syllable from the end. Thus, in a three-syllable word, the first syllable has secondary stress. In a four-syllable word, the second syllable has secondary stress. In a five-syllable word, the first and third syllables have secondary stress, and so on. Long polysyllables are not often used in conversation. Compounds, however, preserve the stress patterns of the constituent words. Thus, the name of a kind of cookie is pronounced SMBOC California PEEP with secondary stress on the second rather than the first syllable, because it is composed of the words SMBOC and California P. Phonation and tone Khmer once had a phonation distinction in its vowels, but this now survives only in the most archaic dialect. The distinction arose historically when vowels after old Khmer voiced consonants became breathy voiced and dithongized, for example asterisk ka, asterisk a, a became asterisk ka, asterisk a. When consonant voicing was lost, the distinction was maintained by the vowel, later the phonation disappeared as well. These processes explain the origin of what are now called a series and O-series consonants in the Khmer script. Although most Cambodian dialects are not tonal, colloquial Phnom Penh dialect has developed a tonal contrast to compensate for the elision of R. Intonation Intonation often conveys semantic context in Khmer, as in distinguishing declarative statements questions and exclamations, the available grammatical means of making such distinctions are not always used, or may be ambiguous, for example, the final interrogative particle, te, can also serve as an emphasizing particle, the intonation pattern of a typical Khmer declarative phrase is a steady rise throughout followed by an abrupt drop on the last syllable, K nom ming kambaren, te. Other intonation contours signify a different type of phrase such as the fold out interrogative, similar to yes no questions in English. Fold out interrogatives remain fairly even in tone throughout but rise sharply towards the end. 
ni can tiw lorenzim reap te exclamatory phrases follow the typical steadily rising pattern, but rise sharply on the last syllable instead of falling.